Uh, our principles. Here's Rob. the one thing, but to get to this point about the rupture, Bernie Sanders isn't a Democrat, never joined the Democratic Party, and Mike Bloomberg is just so moves parties. And if you're talking about him as a savior, there, I, I think one of the challenges for the party is uh, this possibility, and if it's a threat, of a rupture in the party, which is what played really out in 26. Right? And I will Do talk one really other thing. Think, no, though, but here's, let me just finish one thing. going to vote for Trump event. Here's, no, over uh, Bernie Sanders. No, so whether there's an energy to it in Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, I would just make this point. I do think people are angry about what happened in the Senate, in the party. And the irony of this whole situation is that Bernie Sanders is probably the beneficiary of that. Because if you're angry and frustrated, you don't go, you know what I need now? Is a moderate. Cool, Joe Biden. You well, go you know, with the angry voice. That's, that's you go with the what's angry. What's fascinating about this? The it's anger, a The anger in the party, in the Democratic Party, on this issue of Donald Trump and usurping powers and all of that. I would like the Democrats to answer this question because they've been in conflict on this. Are they going to roll back the power of the chief executive when they're trying to put policies in place? No shot. Right? Because that's the problem today. The problem today is it is an overexerted executive, underexerted of congressional branch. And what I've heard from a lot of Democrats in this time is we're going to use the power for whatever we want to do for whatever what, well, whatever we know way that we Bernie Sanders is running up a list of executive yeah, orders for, match. I mean the Republicans but that's the set opposite that's you're making an argument to, Donald Trump to, is taking to benefit, too much power to benefit and you're most gonna, Americans so, to benefit uh, most Americans not to way, benefit the one we didn't set precedent we didn't set a precedent in many ways Democrats find themselves in the situation that Republicans found themselves in 16 which is there's a candidate emerging that the mainline party establishment is not for and, you know, Chris makes some very good points about Bloomberg. So taking your thesis that he is not going to be the nominee and considering, to me, Biden looks very weak right now. Now, he could, he could win South Carolina. He could have a flood of cash come in. There are scenarios where he is the nominee, but he looks weak now. And if Bloomberg can't win and Biden can't win, let me tell you something. Uh, the, Donald Trump uh, uh, is going to win. You remember from 1992? You remember from 1992? I tried to, yeah. In March or April of 1992, Clinton was in third. Clinton right. was in third. third yeah. Ross Perot was in first. The field looked completely in disarray. They would. There would everybody thought there's no way this candidate who's completely harmed can win this. They come out of convention. They're 17 points ahead at the convention. Lots of things can happen in this yeah. race. Well, mm -hmm. lots of things can happen. But and I do want to bring this though, though to Rom. If the nominee is either Bloomberg or Sanders. The Trump parallel really holds, right? I mean, that's a broken Democratic Party that's been taken over by a non democrat I, I don't want to be a broken record, but we are right, I mean, a broken clock, we are right twice a day. The fact is, no. there, one of the threats to the party right now is a rupture in the core, and it played out in 2016. And I do, I want to say this, the reason Donald Trump is vulnerable in this economy is because the fact is he has frightened people over the last three years. Our goal is to have a nominee that reassures them. He is not getting the political benefit of this economy. He's going to run on three things. He's going to run on 3.5% unemployment, 3% wage growth, and 3% equity growth in your homes. The Democrats are going to run on the three H's. Housing, health care, higher education. And the fact is, in this case, we have an opening if we have a candidate who actually reassures people that they will actually govern without this. The people don't want four more years of this tweet chaos and conflict constantly. The and if they are exhausted. They're not angry which is where Democrats are. They're exhausted. And the fact is, we as a party, to win Arizona, to win Wisconsin, to win in Michigan and Pennsylvania, and to win in, and be viable in North Carolina, need a candidate that moves those swing moderate voters to our calm. That was what happened for Clinton, Obama, and in 2018. And we maybe see